Liz Crosby here. Today we're going over leg behind the head variations and I absolutely love leg behind the head variations so I'm really glad that you guys are actually interested in, in diving into these nitty gritty deep dark recesses of the microcosm. I started navigating into leg behind the head variations because I got so deep in my back bends that my lower spine started to talk to me and so I was like I think I need to counterbalance and move in the other direction. And whenever my lower back starts to talk to me from too much back bending, I do a flow like this. So hopefully you enjoy. And of course, please practice Ahimsa. Lovingly expand consciousness. I know everybody wants to get to some of these landmark spaces in their field. And if the leg isn't coming all the way behind the head, that's okay. Start to meander in those directions, but you don't want to force it. Be really careful. And we are moving into spaces that are quite far removed from the lungs. So you want to give yourself some time for the oxygenated blood flow to move down into those tissues and let you know how deep you can go. So that's, that's what's crucial. So we'll get started laying down on our backs. So as we can come together, knees out wide. And left hand to the chest, right hand to the abdomen, close the eyes. Take a nice deep inhalation in through the nose. Pausing at the very top. Exhale, side up and up, let it go. <sighs> Pausing at the very bottom. Now again, inhale deeply through the nose. This right here is what will unlock these spaces. Pausing at the very top. Exhale, side up and up. <sighs> the breath will let us know exactly what we're holding on to. Inhale deeply through the nose. Pause at the very top. And exhale, side up and up. Let it go. <sighs> Seal the lips. Begin to breathe in and out through the nose, constricting the back of the throat just slightly so you can hear and feel the breath. Activate your Ujjayi, proud conqueror's breath. And again, give yourself that time. Lengthening all four parts of the breath cycle so that the breath can go down in and retrieve information. And there's some surprising thought forms that we're holding on to in these spaces. So give yourself permission to witness as the observer. Disidentify from the thoughts as they emerge. Hands can come underneath the thighs. Gently draw the knees together. Feet wide. Let the sacrum breathe a little bit here. And then hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice warm embrace, rocking gently from side to side. Hug yourself up into a tight little ball. Draw your forehead in towards your knees. Give yourself a tight squeeze. Inhale to extend the arms and the legs out. Exhale, draw back in. Inhale to extend. Exhale, draw in. Once more, inhale to extend. Exhale, draw in. Soles the feet come to the mat, hips distance apart. Press up, lift up, roll the spine up. Sweep the arms up as you inhale. Exhale to slowly lower. Inhale to lift you up, sweep the arms up. Exhale, slowly lower. Once more, press up, lift up. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Draw the shoulder blades together, press chest towards chin, breathe into the back of the neck. Now from here, lower the hips down on top of your thumbs to accentuate the thoracic spine opening. Press it up, lift it up, walk the feet over to the right. Lower the hips down over the right arm, breathe into your right shoulder. Press it up, lift it up, walk the feet over to your left. And then lower the hips down over your left arm, using the arm as a roller. Breathe into the left shoulder. Press down through the feet, rise the hips, walk the feet back through the center. Release the interlace, extend the arms straight up, protract shoulder blades with heels up, and slowly lower the spine down, one vertebra at a time. Sit on the lower very last, wrench away through the knees side to side to release in your lower back. And then hug your knees into your chest. 
Give yourself a nice warm embrace, rocking gently from side to side. All right. Hug the right knee in, extend the left leg out to hover. Interlace fingers behind the right sole of the foot, engage your core, lift your chest up. Keep this engagement and then release the right foot, right leg extends up. Inhale as the right leg lowers down to hover, exhale to lift. Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Once more, inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Bend the knee. Scoot the hips to the right, draw the right knee over to your left. Stack right hip on top of the left hip. Roll the right shoulder down towards the ground. Breathe into your lower back, side body and rib cage. So again, this is a deep lower back release flow. Back to the center. Half happy baby. And grab the outer edges of the feet. And then gently draw the right foot down towards the ground. Draw your right thigh towards the ground. And we're just initiating our exploration. And hug the right knee in and switch. Hug the left knee in and into the fingers behind the left side of the foot. Engage your core, lift your chest up. A little bit of top pose, a little bit of heat generation. Release the foot, extend the left leg straight up. Inhale as you slowly lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Once more. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Bend the knee. Draw left leg across the body over to your right. Stack left hip on top of right hip. Roll left shoulder down towards the ground. Breathe into your lower back, side body, and rib cage. Back through to center. Half happy baby. Catch outer edge of the foot. Draw the foot down towards the ground. Left thigh towards your mat. Just easing into this shape. And then hugging both knees in. Give yourself a nice warm embrace. Rock it from side to side. And when you're ready, start to rock it forward and back. Massaging the whole length of the spine. Rock up, cross shins, plant palms, tabletop pose. Round out your palms and your shins. Inhale, swing out the heart forward and occipital to your gaze up. Exhale, round the swing gaze at navel. Inhale, as you peel the chest forward up. And exhale, it's around. Take it into your bear pose when you're ready. Hip circles, shoulder circles, whatever feels good in the spine. Puppy dog pose, knees back, hands forward. Melt the heart down towards the mat. We extend the sequence up towards the snake. Breathe into your thoracic spine. Inhale from here. Lift up just slightly, slide the right arm underneath the left, set the right shoulder down. Left leg can extend out to the left, right hand can catch the outer edge of your left foot. Left arm can sweep up, internally rotate, bend the elbow, reach back for your right thigh for a half bite. Roll the spine open. Gently release. Left hand back down to mat. Slide the left leg back, right hand out from underneath. And switch. Left arm goes underneath the right. Set the left shoulder down. Now sliding the right leg out to the right. Left hand can catch the outer edge. Right hand reaches up. Internally rotate. Bend at the elbow. Reach back for the thigh. Roll that right shoulder back. And then gently release. Right hand back to mat. Slide the right leg back. Left arm out from underneath. Back into puppy dog. Roll forward into your sphinx. Hips to mat. Broaden across the collarbones. Drop the right ear towards the right shoulder. Left chin off your chest. Left your left shoulder. Breathe into the cervical spine. Back to the center, walk the hands to the outer edges of the mat, lift up onto your fingertips and spread the elbows wide. Drop the right shoulder, gaze over your left. Inhale through center. And exhale and twist. Inhale through center, exhale and twist, moving from side to side.
Pause and articulate it, stretching sensation, deep ujjayi breaths. Back through to center as you inhale. Exhale, slowly release the spine back down. Hands come behind the back, interlace, massage your sacrum with your knuckles. And then reach the hands back behind. Straight through both arms, spiral the inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin, we extend out the crown. Keep the engagement in the back of the core, release the interlace, hands like under the shoulders. Add strength of arms, press it with the breath, elbows, and the shoulders back. Puff chest, growing across the collarbones. Tuck the toes, hips lift up and back, downward facing dog pose. Walk it out, bending one knee and the other. Allow the hips to shift from side to side. Breathing into calves, hamstrings, lower back. And downward facing dog pose. Walk the hands back to the feet. Arrive in a forward fold at the back of the mat. Allow for a liberal bend in the knees. Grab opposite elbows. Shake the head yes and no. Right hand plants, bend right knee. Sweep left arm up and twist the spine open. Gaze is at the left fingertips. Deep ujjayi breaths. Left hand can reach back. For the right thigh, half bind. Right arm can thread through for the full bind. Roll that left shoulder back, deep ujjayi breaths. Gently release, switch sides. Left hand plants, bend left knee. Sweep the right arm up and twist the spine open. Right hand can reach back for the left thigh, half bind. Left arm can thread through for the full bind. And just go as far as feels comfortable your knees. Gently release. Both hands to mat. Inhale, peel to the court, find it. Walk it back out on your fingertips. And then flatten the palms when you arrive with the heels. Tiptoe the feet to the front of the mat. Again, release the heels down. When you arrive, inhale as you peel the chest forward, find length, arch spine. Exhale, forward fold. Ground down, lift up. Both arms sweep up, Urdhva Nasasana. Exhale, hands back to heart center. Warming up with some sun salutations. Inhale, sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, hinge from hips through the heart. Inhale, peel chest forward, find length, arch spine. Step back into plank pose for this first one. Shift weight of shoulders beyond the wrists. Hug the elbows in as you slowly lower for shoulder down. Foot one foot at a time. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Roll shoulders back. Roll over the toes. Hips rise up and back. Downward facing dog pose. Now lifting one foot off of the mat by plugging the finger hip bone into the hip socket. Find your mula bandha activation. And then switch. Hover the other foot. Both feet come together at the back of the mat. Lift the heels, bend the knees, gaze forward in between the thumbs. Push the floor away, arms stay straight. See if you can float to the front of the mat. Inhale as you peel chest forward, find them. Exhale, forward fold. Ground down, lift up. Urdhva Hastasana, inhale, rise up. Exhale, the hands back and heart center. Again, inhale, sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, knee with heart. Inhale, peel chest forward, fine leaf arch. Plant down through palms. This time, if you'd like to, you can take a little hop back down with bent elbows. Form and staff. Inhale to your Urdhva Mukha. Roll the shoulders back. Exhale, roll for toes. Hips rise up and back. Downward facing dog pose. Again, a little quick bond of check. Plug right femur hip bone in. Plug left femur hip bone in. Both feet come together at the back of the mat. Gaze between the thumbs, lift the heels, bend the knees, make your way. Inhale, peel chest forward, find it. Exhale, forward fold. Ground down, lift up, fold arms, sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Surya Namaskar B, share pose, bending both knees. Both arms sweep, gaze up, lift your heart up. Draw the floating lips together, relax the shoulders. 
Exhale, you release. Straighten through both legs. Inhale, tilt chest forward, find length. Optional Bukhasana. Knees high up and in towards the armpits. Lay weight forward. Lift one or both feet. Gaze forward. Shoot the head forward as you shoot the feet back. Inhale into your earth. Go, go. Roll the shoulders back. Exhale. Adho Mukha. Hips lift up and back. As you inhale, right leg extends. Push out through the heel. Exhale, lift the nose. Round the upper spine, gently sit the right foot between the palms. Left foot swings down, 45. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Gaze up, lift your heart up. Exhale, hands to mat. Again, you can step that right foot back, plank, or optional handstand vinyasa. Inhale to your earth, Luka. Exhale, Adamuka. Right away, left leg extends as you inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Down and upper spine, step it through. Right foot swings down, inhale, rise. Warrior one. Begin gaze up, lift your heart up, one conduit of energy. Hands to mat. Vinyasa, again, handstand if you want. Back to your ujjayi, rhythmically breathing in and out through the nose, slight constriction of the glottis. Bond the check, pull that right femur head bone in, pull the left femur head bone in, both feet together, back of mat, lift heels, bend knees, get support in between the thumbs, exhale, make your way. Inhale, peel chest forward, find length. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bending knees. Both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toe mounds. Lift your heels up, slow roll it down. Knees open wide, reach your arms straight through and gently take a seat. Float those feet. Knees can stay bent or straighten through the legs. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower, exhales to lift, lower and hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Hug your knees in, rock it back up into your malasana. So we're going to cruise through some familiar territory to prepare ourselves for leg behind the head. Right arm sweeps forward and in front of the right shin. Left hand can press the left knee away. Maybe left arm extends up. Internally rotate both arms, bend at the elbows, reach back through fingertips or a wrist. Roll that left shoulder back. Those of you that want to, you can scoot that left foot in. Press it up, lift it up, root to rise. Rise up into your leg lifts. And then slowly lower it back down again. Gently release. Palms to the mat now. Bakasana, maybe take it into Ekapada Bakasana. Knees come high up and towards the armpits. And if you want it, get a quick headstand in. Slowly lower, crown to ground, press it up, lift it up. Knees come high up and in. Press up back into your Bakasana crow. Shift weight onto the right shin. Left leg extends back. Left leg steps way back. Right foot steps between the palms. Left foot swings down to 45. Windmill it up, leading with your left arm. Warrior two, relax the shoulders, and extend out your fingertips. Flip the right palm, reverse your warrior. Left hand to third calf, lengthen through the right side body. Breathe into the right side body. Inhale, rise. Right elbow, right thigh, left arm extends forward. Extend the side angle. Maybe left hand reaches back for the half line. Maybe right hand instep of the right foot, there is a full line. Full binders, take flight. Left foot steps forward. Press up, lift up. Root to rise, bird of paradise. And then slowly lower back down again, birds. 
Pressing down through the right foot, shift weight forward into crown. Left leg extends back. Down, half moon pose on your way back. And step it, way back through the spine. Rise, straighten through the right leg as you rise. Heel toe that left foot in. Deepen in the right hip crease, extend the right arm forward, reach. Right hand to ankle, shin, floor. Left arm extends up. Wrap that right sit bone underneath you, roll the left shoulder back. Gaze is at the left fingertips. And then again to prepare ourselves for diving deeper. Let's throw that left foot in a little bit. Right hand can reach back for your left ankle, left shin. Nuzzle your right shoulder up against your right knee. Left hand can catch the outer edge of the right foot and then gently roll that left shoulder open. Send in breath. Amazing. Then gently release right hand forward, right foot. Press up, lift up. Rise the left leg up, half moon pose. Maybe bending in the left knee. Reach back with the left hand for the left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Swing the heart forward towards the front of the room. Then gently release. Extend the left leg back. With grace and ease, step it way back, warrior two, settle in. Flip the right palm, reverse your warrior lengthen. And inhale as you rise. Left arm sweeps up, left heel lifts, high pressing. Left hand to the instep of the right foot, right arm sweeps up, open high pressing. Now rotate onto the outer edges of both your feet and let the left hip dip. Right hand can reach back behind you. Breathe into the left side body. So in third series of Ashtanga, they actually take the Yogi Tolok and Vashi Stasana before the leg behind the head variation. So I think it's a useful template to work off of. Start to lift the hips back up again. Again, if that's a little bit beyond your abilities as of yet, feel free to skip. You can lower form, lower knee, maybe. I like to catch the toe here. Right hand can catch, right big toe. Yogi toe lock and lift. When you're complete here, release. Right foot steps back behind, press down through both feet, lift the hips up wide open. Roll it back into downward facing. And vinyasa if it's pleasing. Lift the heels, bend the knees. Roll the spine forward into your plank pose as you inhale. Exhale, roll for Shatananda. Inhale, Urdhva Mudra. Exhale, Adha Mudra. Again, from down dog, plug it in, plug it in. Both feet together, back of mat, lift heels, bend knees, gaze forward in between, make your way. Inhale, peel chest forward, front leg flash. And exhale, forward fold. Show pose, bending knees. Both arms sweep. Shift weight into the big toe mount, heels lift. And slowly lower it down. Knees open wide, reach arms straight through. Jamie, take a seat. Float your feet. Now, knees can stay bent until that piriformis develops. Maybe straight through the legs. Little boat ride. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Lower and hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Hug knees in and start to take some rocks. Feet wide. Reach your arms through. Malasana squat. All right. So again, these binds are pretty familiar territory. Especially if you've been following along uh, the binding Malasana and Bird of Paradise, of course. Left arm sweeps forward and in front of left shin, right hand to right knee. These are kind of preparing our body for diving even deeper. Right arm can extend up, internally rotate, bend of the elbows, reach back, 
for fingertips or a wrist. Pull that right shoulder back. Maybe we scoot the right foot in. And then pressing down through the right foot, root to rise, come to stand. Leg loose. And then slowly lower, leg loosers. Gently release. Again, if you're not taking all these poses quite yet, that's okay. Even just becoming familiar with them is the first step. I can't tell you how many times I was looking around the, the room and the studio, just jaw dropped, like, what? The human body does that? Yeah, that's a part of the process, right? <laughs> Even becoming aware that the human body is capable of such things, <laughs> but cost my pro pose. Those of you that took it into headstand, again, such a lovely way to maintain Bond the connection, find integrity through the whole spine. Slowly lower, ground to ground. Press it up, lift it up. Knees high up and in. Press up, lift up, back into the costume. Pro pose. Now shift weight into the left foot. Right knee lifts, extend right leg back. Right foot steps way back. So we average down, the finger arch up. Left foot steps between the palms. Now windmill it up, meeting with the right arm, warrior two. Settle in. Flip the left palm, reverse your warrior. Right hand, better calf. Lengthen through the left side body. Inhale as you rise, left elbow, left thigh. Right arm extends forward. Right hand can reach back for left thigh, half body. Left hand to instep the left foot, there is a full right. Full riders, maybe take flight. Right foot steps forward. Press up, lift up, root to rise up. Bird of paradise. And then slowly lower back down, your embrace. Pressing down through the left foot. Shift weight forward into crown. Right leg extends back. Bound half moon pose on the way back. Step it way back, release the bind, rise the warrior two. Straight through left leg as you rise. Come to right foot in shoulder in the stance. Deepen the left hip crease, extend left arm forward, reach. Left hand to ankle shin floor, right arm extends up and twist the spine open. Is at the right fingertips. And again, you can heel to that right foot in, shorten the stance so that you can easily connect left hand to right shin. Maybe right hand catches outer edge of the left foot and roll that right shoulder open. Gently release. Left hand forward in front of left foot. Right leg sweeps up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Maybe bend the right knee, reach back with the right hand for the right foot. Kick the foot into the hand and slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. Beautiful, gently releasing the right leg back. And with grace and ease, step it way back, warrior two, once more. Reverse your warrior once you're settled in. Inhale as you rise. Both arms sweep up, high crescent. Right hand to the instep of the left foot, left arm sweeps up. Open on your crescent. Rotate onto the outer edges of both feet, let the right hip dip, left hand to left knee. Ease into the outer hip stretch. Send in breath. So I, I prefer to kind of focus more so on leg behind head variations. Some people will just mix it all in, um, but sometimes it can be a little jarring on my spine to go super deep into back bends and then super deep into forward folds. So whatever feels right to you, please always honor your body. Start to lift it back up again. I am offering a little bit of back bending just so we can maintain balance, right? The shell pasta and variation and whatnot. Peace and fingers and thumb, catch the left big toe. Extend that left leg up. And then left foot steps back behind. Press down through both feet with the hips up for your wild thing. Right 
there's a back bend as well. And actually, once the leg starts to go down the back, you can actually back bend again with leg behind the back. Believe it or not, back into your downward facing dog pose. We won't be doing that this practice, so no worries. Let the heels bend the knees. Roll the spine forward into your plank pose as you can now. Exhale, up your shoulder on the hug the elbows in. Inhale into your earth and the roll the shoulders back. Exhale, roll with the toes, hips lift up and back. Downward facing dog pose. All right. Here we go. Right leg extends up and back as you inhale. <clears throat> and if you want to, we're going to step the right foot through, but if you'd like to take a little hop up in the handstand, get a little hover time, bend in that left knee, coil up some potential energy, and pass. Find the leg switch. Right foot between the palms, left foot steps, way back, inhale, rise, high cross and pause. Pressing down through the right foot, draw your left knee into your chest, kind of stand. And then right hand to right hip, left peace on fingers and thumb, half left big toe, extend left leg forward. Open the left leg, arms to the left, maybe grow a tree branch, just cranking up the heel a little bit on that hip. Slowly lower the left foot down to meet the right. You can kind of hinge at the hips, forward fold a little bit, and then rise the left leg back up again. Back through to center. Right hand reaches across. Catch outer edge of knee or outer edge of foot. Get your left hand back and twist. For navel as you twist, gaze is over the left shoulder, left fingertips. Back through the center. Now into the fingers around left sole of the foot. Slowly lower down, pistol squats. Oh yeah. Here we go. Press it up, lift it up, lift your eyes. Amazing. Release the foot, hands to hips, or grow branches here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back, warrior three. Gently bend right knee, step left foot way back, high crescent pose. Open it out, warrior two. Flip right palm, reverse your warrior. And windmill the hands down to the mat. All right, so here we go. You can lift that left heel up, walk the right foot over to the right. And then we're going to put our leg behind the head. <laughs> I'm gonna go through a few variations here. But honestly, I was, I was right here in this spot for a really long time. And I'm just like, what? And you're kind of looking there like, what? The head goes through that hole? Are you serious? Yes, yes it does. All right, so here we go. Kind of lower down onto the forearms a little bit. And then kind of start with that right arm leading in. If you want to, you can, of course, work the Vijvami Chasana first. Left foot swings down to a 45. Balancing the right leg on top of the upper arm, little shelf. Work towards straightening through. And then of course, maybe, here we go. Leg behind the head. And again, you can stay here, sending breath, creating space. Maybe, similar to Vijvamitasana. You can lift it up. You might need to actually hold the foot so that it stays for a little bit. No worries. Maybe float. Now, the left foot steps forward to the front of the mat. If you don't have leg behind that, it might just be watch awesome for a little bit. That's okay. And here, you can just chill and forward fold. Or maybe come up to stand. Hands in the heart center. Amazing. And then make your way back down. Hands back to mat. Step the left leg back and enjoy 
Belly behind the head and downward facing dog pose. So delicious. And then release. Step the right foot back. Adha Mukha Shvanasana. Ooh, I feel some space in the lower back opening up already. Vinyasa if it's pleasing. Your tails bend knees. Both plank forward as you inhale. Plank pose. Exhale for Shatavanda. Inhale, Ardha Mukha. And exhale, Adha Mukha. And yeah, you can flip one foot at a time. Or if you are sliding the feet back, I like to slide on the soft part of the foot and flip last minute so I don't deteriorate my knot too fast. Here we go. We've got two legs. Left leg extends up and back as you inhale. And then you can kind of bend in the right knee. Feel free to just step that left foot through too if this doesn't please you, no worries. And pounce. Connect legs together at the top. Left leg slowly lowers. Maybe toe tap the left wrist. Right foot steps way back. Inhale, rise up high, press your toes. Amazing. Here we go, pressing down through the left foot. Draw your right knee into your chest, kind of stand. Right piece, my fingers and thumb. Catch the right big toe. Extend the right leg forward. So again, one foundational point. We're really cranking up the heat on that left hip. Open the right leg out to the right. Maybe left arm extends out to the left. Optional, hinge your hips, slowly lower right foot down to meet the left. So really asking all of those muscles to warm up for us to hold all these different variations in space. Start to rise it back up. Actively participating in evolution. Back to the center. Left hand reaches across, catch outer edge of the knee or outer edge of the foot, put your right hand back and twist. From the navel as you twist, gaze over the right shoulder, right fingertips. Back through to center. Interlace fingers around the right sole of the foot, maybe slowly lower right down, just as far as take it to the ground. Fun stuff. <laughs> and when you're ready, press it up, lift it up, root to rise up. Amazing. Release the foot, hands to hips, or go branches here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back. Layer three. Gently step right foot way back, high press and pose. Open it out, warrior two. Flip it, reverse it, lengthen. And windmill the hands. Down to the mat. Again, right heel can lift. Maybe you explore just Vishwami Trasana for now. So lowering it down onto the forearms. Take some hip circles. When you're ready, left arm can come underneath the left leg. Right foot seals back down. Catch the outer to the left foot. Work to straighten through the left leg, maybe. Nice little, little precursor. And then when you're ready, maybe. And again, you might be just chilling here. And, and when you find your edge, right, knowledge, know your ledge. Really tune in with your breath, the airspace cosmonaut, and extrapolate the information that is being hoarded by that muscle tension, right? So here we go. Head goes behind the leg. Maybe. Again, initially, you might need to hold on to that foot. Your neck muscles will get really strong too, by the way. Right arm can extend eventually. Maybe. Right foot steps forward. And enjoy the forward fold here. Reach your eyes. Hands in the heart center. And slowly lower. 
Second right foot back. Pause for a moment. In your downward facing dog pose. Is delicious. Now the whole sacrum is just opened up, breathing with the heels, bend the knees, face forward, roll the spine forward, slowly lower up your shoulder on the so here's what I mean. Brush the soft part of your toes back and then roll over the toes. Inhale, Urdhva. Exhale, Adhamukha Shvanasana. Downward facing dog pose. Knees to mat, hips to heels, child's pose for a few breaths. Honored by acknowledging the new space that you've created. Rolling the spine up through the seated. Tuck your toes, stay seated on top of your heels. You can manually tuck those pinky toes. All right. And then palms come forward facing out. Cross the arms, interlace your fingers. Knuckles come toward your chest and reach your arms through. Knuckles back towards the chest. Release, opposite hand on top. Interlace, knuckles come towards the chest. Reach the arms through. Towards the chest, release, shake it out side to side, and then forward and back. Walk the hands forward, untuck the toes, gentle drum roll, kick the feet up. Hands shoulder right over the heels, fingertips point towards your knees, and lean your weight back. So we peel the heels of the hands up off of the mat. So I, I, I don't have too much time left. But I do want to go over how you can start to work like behind the head into your seated sequence postures. Lean your weight back, lift your knees up. So we went over how to incorporate like behind the head into your standing postures. And we usually do the standing postures first to warm up and temper the body from the inside. And then we take it down to the floor to make some real transformations with all the heat that we've generated. Maybe lift up on top of the tomato. And it's amazing too, they say that the universe is like a thought. Hermetic principle of the universe is mental. Yoga sutta spiritus noraha. Yoga is the slowing of the trains of the mind. So it's literally just about thinking and through our willpower, actually moving into some of these spaces. So don't be defeatist and say, I can't do it, but just start, just start. Nobody starts out. I mean, not even the acrobats and the gymnasts because it doesn't look pretty in a performance. So more, more often than not, not even the gymnasts or the acrobats start out with the leg behind the head. We all have to work our way into it. So when you're ready, tabletop pose, tuck the toes, hips with them back, downward facing dog pose. And again, you can just step forward and then take a seat. Or again, plug it in, plug it in, lift heels, bend knees, gaze in between, step lightly up. Believe it or not, there's people that can do leg behind the back in handstand too. So you can start to bring the leg behind the back so far that you can bring the hips back up to stack. Gently release. We are infinite. <laughs> All right, draw your right leg in. Now lifting the right foot up. Interlace fingers and make the right sole of the foot. And then straight through the right leg, draw forward towards shin, crunch asana. And then bending in the knee, catch the outer edge of the foot, make your elbow crease, cradle your leg. Now catching the right sole of the foot with your left hand, thread the right arm through the window. Now work on straightening through your right leg. Amazing. If you want to, you can take a little also across my hair, hands plant, make a shelf with your arms, press the leg into the upper arm, float that left leg up, maybe catch. 
and then gently set it back down. All right, now try to bring your foot towards your ear. And if you can do that, maybe you can bend your left knee a little bit, kind of use it as a brace. Place the right foot into your right armpit. And draw the right knee down towards the floor. Again, just go as far as feels comfortable here, yogis. The foot initially might make it to the elbow. And it's like an exciting day when it gets in the armpit. And the armpit is like a little pocket where you can hold on to your foot. It's amazing. It's like our bodies were made to do this stuff. And gently release. Okay, here we go. Now, place the right leg behind the head. And you kind of have to find a way to like wiggle that feels good to you. All right, so now that you're here, if you have the right leg behind the head, you can forward fold it. Deep Ujjayi breaths. And then roll the spine back up through the seated. This is optional, but it is one of my favorites. Hands can plant. And then press up, lift up, float the left leg up. Maybe, and I like to kind of use my right elbow as a brace. Place your right thigh on top of the right elbow, thread the left leg through. Out and around. Maybe catch the right wrist. Forming pose. And gently step through to center. And release. I always feel like it just feels so right to take another compass pose after that. And then gently release. We extend the right leg for now. All right, turn the left knee, lean in, into those fingers and the left sole of the foot. I'm not going to make this do vinyasas in between, but if you want to pause and do a vinyasa in between, jump through, feel free, straighten through the left leg. Especially if you're doing the iron balances, you should generally be able to maintain your top as heat for purification. And then bending in the left knee, catch the edge of the foot with your right elbow crease, and then Take a little cradle. Doesn't your lower back feel divine though? It's amazing. I uh, used to have lower back pain and that was one of the big reasons that I first got into my yoga practice. Many reasons, but that was a big one. <laughs> it was kind of a necessity. Catching the foot with your right hand, left arm goes through, and then you plant down through the left palm, straight through the left leg. Being a surfer, of course, I fell in love with Scorpion, which is a huge back bend, and my lower back started to talk to me. So that's why I started getting obsessed with the leg behind head variations. Hands plant, press up, lift up, maybe catch. I was not about to suffer from lower back pain again, but I was not going to give up those Scorpions either. Gently release. So if, even if you don't scorpion quite yet, it's all good. It is, uh, it is a process. So, and, and maybe you, you can take a different route than me instead of having to find the shape to counterbalance the scorpion after the fact. You can start to work the go ahead and head and ease into your scorpion at, at your own pace. So left arm threads over and across, and it's okay. If the foot is just connecting to the elbow, no worries. You can bust the mudra for Instagram. Just kidding. <laughs> it's all about going inwards. Gently release. Now maybe, there we go. Leg behind the head. No forcing anything. Tune in. Let the breath travel deep down into these tissues. Acknowledge. And I'm not going to demo it here because I'm sure that most of my viewers aren't quite ready for it yet, but eventually, yes, you can bring the foot underneath the opposite arm. So, and that's how you can start to bring the leg down the back, which is so glorious. For it, fold it. I'm all about that radical self-reliance, and it really is like a roller. Your shin bones are so delicious as they roll down the vertebral column and then rise it back up again. Okay, so a couple arm balances here. Hands can plant. Press up, lift up. 
float the right leg up. You can use the left elbow as a brace. Thread the right arm through at a diagonal. Wrap around. Catch. Own pose. All the while, send breath in. Release. Back through to center. And gently release it back down. One more compass pose, just for good measure. And release, and extend that left leg out. Whew, lower spine is so open right now. Right leg draws in. Okay, so here, a couple options. You can, if you want to, just take a simple twist. Mara Shirasana, uh, B, no, sorry, C. Right hand behind the sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, let's elbow out to the right knee from navel as you twist. I'm gonna throw in another opportunity to take a leg bottom and a head variation here. So, yogis, if you're feeling it, left leg comes back behind the head. I'll do this a little bit of an angle so you can see. Then draw the right knee in. So again, left leg can stay straight. If you're like, I am over leg behind the head, I have had enough, feel free to just keep that left leg straight. Now, from here, you can throw the left arm over and across. Reach back, catch. Now, maybe those of you that would like to, you can actually lift up onto the right foot. Come into a little bit of toe stand. Left arm wraps around, gain weight into the new foundation. You take it up for another arm balance. That one is all about, and again, as you release that delicious compass pose, we extend back out. Woo, wiggle around. Welcome in the new transformation. Again, if you are over leg behind the head, just left leg goes in. Left hand behind the sacrum, right arm extends. Exhale, right elbow, outer to the left knee from navel as you twist. Or, and you can combine this as well, right leg comes behind the head again. And you can take the bind here. Avoid the kneecap. You want to get below the knee. Reach back, maybe clasp. And then maybe, again, tune in. If it's calling in the preface before you take it into the eye balance, it's a little toe stand. <laughs> you can find the balance here too, if you want. Then hands plant, make a shelf, lean right in, and extend. Gently. Release, compass, Whew. and we extend that right leg back out. Whew. All right, I think by now we've all eaten up some karmas, we've all cleared some new space, bounce the knees, winch over the feet, slight flush to the bottom, out from underneath. Inhale as you sweep the hands out and up, and exhale forward, fold it. Whew. That is delicious. I absolutely love it. And I think it, sometimes if you're a little bit more extroverted, these poses can be a little bit more challenging for you, but honestly, it will help you to become even more extroverted. Like I was saying, it will alleviate any lower back pressure so you can continue to thrive in your back bending practice. And then rolling the spine back up through the seated. Legs come out wide, just kind of as a counterbalance for Upavishta Konasana. And again, if you would like to, you can take it up into your middle. Press it up, lift it up. Couple more deep breaths here.
and then press back into your movement. Reach to walk the hands over to the right. Right arm inseam, right leg sweep, left arm up overhead, side body stretch. Back into center, walk the hands to the left. Right arm sweeps up and overhead for your side body stretch. Back through center, forward fold it once more. Amazing, and then walk the hands back in. Hands underneath the knees. Slide the feet in. Soles the feet together, knees come wide. Skip the hips towards the heels. Hands underneath the feet. Inhale, find length through the spine. And exhaling, forward fold. Press the elbows into the inner thighs. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Breathe into that space. Spine back up through seated. This is probably enough leg behind the head for now. Drive your knees in. <laughs> There's so much more. We're infinite. I, I love it. I'm gonna have I have so much content. It's never ending. Extend the arms forward, slowly lower it down. And then hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice warm embrace, rocking gently from side to side. So again, you can gauge it if you feel like just chilling in bridge pose, feel free. If you are feeling like going up into full Urdhva D, it is kind of nice to, to keep that heart space open. Like, hey, I'm still thinking about two back bends. <laughs> Fingers can graze your ankles. Ground, ground down through the outer arches and feet with the inner arches up. Press up, lift up, pull the spine up. Hands can come behind the back into a lace. Again, feel free to just chill here. If this is where you're at, or if you want to take a little back bend, hands alongside the ears, fingers point towards your shoulders, wrap the elbows in, press it up into the muscles of the crown of the head, pause. Walk the hands a little bit closer, press up, lift up, the rest of the way up into your full Urdhva Dhanurasana. Maybe one leg extends. Followed by the other. And then maybe take some rocks to to stand. Feel free to use the wall. Please use the wall until it is no longer needed, yogis. When you're ready, hands in the heart center. And then pulse the hips forward as you roll the shoulders back. Core stays engaged. Hands ready to receive the mat. Tuck the chin. Back of the head to the mat first. Slow roll the spine down. And windshield wiper the knees. Amazing. Hug the right knee in. Extend the left leg out. And scoot the hips to the right. Draw right knee over to your left. Step right knee on top of left. Roll right shoulder down towards the ground. Breathe into your lower back. Side body rib cage. Back through to center. All right, so maybe just a little tiny bit more. Half happy baby. Maybe leg behind the head. If you've got leg behind the head, maybe also, if you want, you can bring the left foot into your left armpit here. I love this stuff. <laughs> you never expect to get into this stuff. You get, you just, I think most yogis fall in love with the back bends, and then we come back around to these poses by necessity. They're so delicious, though. Your lower spine is just going to love you, but tune in. Just go as far as feels comfortable. Gently release that left foot, and then release the right leg. Switch. Hug the left knee and extend the right leg out. Sweep the hips to the left. Draw the left knee to the right. Stack the left hip on top of the right hip. Roll your left shoulder down to the ground. So we've taken leg behind the head variations in all orientations essentially now. <laughs> Rolling it back through the center. You can actually also take it um, in like a half, a half pigeon, similar to um, half pigeon except the leg position is behind your head. Um, so again, we'll, we'll have to revisit the, the leg behind the head realm. Maybe left shin goes behind the head. 
right foot can come into the right armpit. Deep right breaths into the sacrum. Amazing, then gently release. Release the left leg out from behind. Extend the legs straight up. Wrap the elbows in. Pressing down the upper arms. Engage your core. And sweep the legs up and overhead. Shoulder stand arms. Feel free to stay here or lower the feet down for Halasana. Hands can come behind the back. Into the legs. Press the palms together. Press chest towards chin. Bending the knees. Squeeze the ears with your knees. Kind of get off. Again, maybe the knees don't even around the ears. You can take the knees to the forehead. And gently release. Slow roll the spine down. One vertebra at a time. Hands underneath your seat. Legs extend forward. Press down to the forearms and lift the chest off of the head. Hang back. Gently release that. Have a big pose. Grab powder just of the feet. And maybe we haven't done both at the same time yet. So here it is. Doi Pada Shirshasana in this orientation, also known as Yoga Nidrasana. Which means yogic sleep. There's actually a meditation you can do called Yoga Nidra. This is the posture Yoga Nidrasana. And it will prepare you for Shavasana very, very much so, as it opens up the whole dorsal side of the spine, which is said to be connected to the lunar, lunar channel, feminine channel. Scientifically, doing forward folds like this, opening up the whole dorsal side of the spine, will also predispose you to activating your parasympathetic nervous system. So really, this is perfect for right before Shavasana, or I love to just sit in this pose at the end of the day and just chill, especially if I've been back bending a lot in my practice. Make sure that you counterbalance. You'll learn to love it. And then gently release. Extending the legs out. Feet flop open, palms face up. Inside the flesh, the bottom out from underneath you. Lift your chest up, slide the shoulder blades together and down the back. Let the feet flop open to the sides, palms facing up, close the eyes. Take a nice deep inhalation in through the nose. And exhale, side out the mouth. And again, feel that all of this new space that you've unlocked in the sacral region. Sacrum is associated with Spadhisthana. Sacral chakra, how we connect with others, our creative energy. And just allow this new transformation to integrate into your being. Lifting the stagnant energy that you released, sending it back to Mother Earth who graciously accepts, and lifting this newfound energy up to the collective consciousness. The highest light within you truly sees and honors the highest light within you. I thank you for your practice and your presence. Namaste.